Perhaps you've seen this painting before, or some version of it. These days, it's practically commonplace. But when it was painted, it was a rare wonder. The artist, Botticelli, was painting at a time in Italy that was exciting and changing. Why? For this and other surprises, stay tuned. The Birth of Venus, painted around 1485 by Alessandro Botticelli, is a masterpiece. That's Venus in the middle of the painting. Isn't she lovely? Venus is a goddess of the ancient Mediterranean, and she symbolizes love and beauty. In this painting, Botticelli tells us a story, the story of Venus's birth. But wait, shouldn't Venus look more like, um, a baby? So, in the story, she was actually born fully grown. For now, Venus stands, commanding our attention from the middle of the painting. From the onlookers, we see that all eyes are on her, including ours. Venus is standing in an oversized scallop shell that is floating on the water. She covers her breasts with her right hand. She is a newborn, but her hair looks magnificent. It tumbles over her body in undulating waves that echo the sea beneath her. Wait, she's standing on the sea? Regardless, her long flowing hair covers her in all the right places. I wish my hair looked like that. Venus draws admiration from the other figures in the painting and from us, the viewers. She is tall and luminous and alluring. Venus represents love. Unlike her son Cupid, who deals in desire and lust, Venus's love is purer. It is a sacred love rather than an earthly erotic love. Her face is calm and serene. She is both naked and modest. Venus's hair is flowing. The cloth that is being held up is blowing, and flowers are flying everywhere. Botticelli has painted a dark outline surrounding Venus. This contrasts with her flesh, making her skin look so light and smooth that it resembles marble. Was Botticelli inspired and influenced by marble sculptures from antiquity? Let us compare the Capitoline Venus with our Venus. Do you see a resemblance? Let us know in the comments. So we start to see this connection then between the past and the present, between the ancient Mediterranean and contemporary Renaissance Rome. And what's interesting is that this very real connection also made a sharp break with a thousand years of medieval art. What do you see? If you look closely, you'll see medieval Christian themes dominate the arts. There are lots and lots of clothes and lots and lots of religious stories and figures. We also see the style still has strong medieval influences. What do we not see? The three-dimensional depth and anatomical precision of classical sculpture. The human figure in all its beauty. Classical stories and heroes who have been lost in time for centuries. So after all this gap, Botticelli's Venus was utterly remarkable. She heralded the rebirth of an ancient heritage, not only of beauty, but of new ways to consider and explore the world. For historical context, this was also a time of rebirth and change in Europe. Huge cultural and economic changes were happening. This was the beginning of the early Renaissance in Italy. Renaissance literally means rebirth. This was an exciting time for artists. New subject matters were being explored. It wasn't just the usual religious and biblical figures. There was a return to ancient stories, and perhaps a rekindled appreciation for the beauty of the human figure. The naked body was common in classical art, but centuries of medieval prudishness stood between Athens' glory and Botticelli's Florence. So what do you make of Botticelli? Was he embarking on a new journey? Or unearthing a lost chapter in human history? Or perhaps both? Tell us in the comments below what you think. Back to the painting, awaiting her arrival on land is a woman holding a beautiful garment to cover Venus's nakedness. She is one of the minor goddesses representing the seasons. Her dress is a floral pattern, suggesting she is the horror of spring. The theme of spring and birth intertwine throughout this painting. And this was a spring and a rebirth for Europe. 
While Venus has had ancient roots in Europe, she had not been seen, certainly not in all her natural beauty laid bare, for some time. Artists also began to paint figures with more anatomical realism. Besides embracing new subject matter, Botticelli also embraced new techniques. The canvas. What? Yes. This was a new and cheap option compared to expansive panels or frescoes. The birth of Venus is actually on two canvases that were sewn together. New subject matter and new techniques. Was Botticelli a trend spotter? Perhaps. In so many ways, Botticelli is pushing the bar in this painting. Remember that in the 15th century, the Vatican and its interpretation of values were enforceable by law. At the same time as Botticelli makes Venus more lifelike than the flat icons that came before, the painting is not realistic. There is an element of fantasy portrayed, as with the oversized shell Venus stands on. The background still has an element of flatness and is not painted with intense detail. We see water, sky, and laurel trees on the shore. Yet Botticelli's art guides us back to the figures of the story. Botticelli's The Birth of Venus has captured the hearts of people from around the globe. Or maybe Cupid had something to do with that. Who are those people blowing on her? Ew, it's a bit germy. Don't worry, that is Zephyrus. He is the ancient god of the West Winds. He's a good guy. His winds are kind and gentle and announce the arrival of spring and the end of winter. Yay! He is trying to blow Venus to shore with the nymph beside him. Together, they are an impressive pair. Winged and intertwined, they draw your eye from Venus. The lines of wind give a sense of direction to the viewer, bringing our gaze back to our goddess herself. They also bring movement and energy to the painting. The nymph on his right doesn't seem to be blowing as hard, but that's okay, because she is more of a breeze than a wind. Seriously, together with their combined breath, they push Venus to the shores of Cyprus, to our world, where we can celebrate her beauty once again. I hope you have been enjoying this video so far. Do you have a favorite painting or artist that you would like to see featured on the channel? Let us know in the comments, we love to hear from you. Looking back, it's incredible to see how this painting has taken on a life of its own and brought beauty to millions of people. And Botticelli is even in a Netflix series, Medici. Cool. That aside, Botticelli was a groundbreaking artist who explored new terrain, who painted rebirth at a time of cultural rebirth, who created an early Renaissance masterpiece. We love to have you as part of the community. We invite you to subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments. What's your takeaway? Thank you for watching this video and I will see you soon. May your life be ever artful.